soul is of ancient dragon origin. I just wanted to tell you too that I that I started I I got your email and I started to read in, okay. in the two minutes before I, I signed up with you and it was I don't know how much feedback you want from me on my own shamanic history but the mother of dragons this is like it's already I'm like I have embodied dragon usurpers to be able to clear the name dragon even my work here in this town yes. when i when i when i did the clearing i needed to clear i was led to a place in the bishop's palace near wells where there's this place called the dragon's lair and i went through this whole process of of leaving offerings and praying and i was like oh that's why i'm here i had to do this work uh, there's a liberation of the dragon lines again uh, so dragon 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 wow. all over my life especially in the past 10 years so thank oh. you uh, you're so welcome. You're connected to all the dragons. So it was, is, was, and ever will be. So you can really tap into any of the dragons, is, was, and ever will be. And again, Dow's many times, just making sure I'm getting correct information. It was yes, yes, yes. Before you realize the power of your soul frequency, you tend to to allow others to mistreat you, or you have a hard time saying no. So you may have a period of escapism. And I'm feeling like this is more really early. Yeah. I wanted to tell you about that. I read that. I read that part yeah, so okay. far. I just wanted yeah. to echo back to you. Yeah. I was in a cult in the United States, a Santo yeah. Daime cult of ayahuasca. So I was basically in an altered state for seven years. <laughs> Wow. In, a, in a religious cult <laughs> until I came out of it and and then I was like oh I mean I never went all the way in which is how I was able to get out but the right. escape it was a, a, basically a drug state for seven years oh that my ended gosh. in 2020 <laughs> how accurate is that and it was ayahuasca I, I've it done was. that a few times yeah I drank I drank ayahuasca between two and ten times a month for seven years <laughs> Wow. Just, just I didn't know what that was till I stopped and I was like nobody does that it's so <laughs> crazy oh my goodness well it was an experience it's part of how I can talk to you about the dragons embodying them and I, I, I became I became an energy healer through through drinking the medicine until I was having the experiences when I wasn't drinking the medicine wow. so oh yeah wow. that's that's why yeah. Okay. But you're you're right on about that. About the not saying no. About being taken advantage of. Absolutely. Hundred percent. When I went into the Akashic records, I saw you as an ancient dragon being. Okay. There is a hum to this place, and the place is very dim lit, dimly lit. <laughs> I can totally feel it. It's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> sorry okay. it's very very powerful I've only felt it once before wow yeah I had this I had, I had this woman this is it okay to say to say yeah, yes, yes, I yes. met this I met this girl her name was Mariposa Galactica which means galactic butterfly she was a walk-in one of the first that I've ever met and I spent an afternoon with her on a blanket in a park and I experienced dragons like the highest frequency I have ever felt ever heard they they were stepping down it was being stepped down by 5000 percent in order for me to receive this tiny tiny bits of anything even and when you start talking I can feel it again I've only ever felt it once in my whole life this is so beautiful all oh, that makes me happy I feel that feeling when I was getting the story and sharing it again with you now. And this is why I was so excited <laughs> to like share you this story. I'm like, I I can't wait for this session. I'm so excited. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad too. And I'm glad we're recording it because if this if this helps anybody too or helps this energy to come out into the world, I really want it to. So that's really beautiful. Thank you for that. So the um, yeah, I was getting the whole environment and the so it was dim lit, but the frequency was so high and is so high that it was like it was bright there. I know it's kind of, how does that make sense? So No, it doesn't. It, it's perfect. That, yeah. It's perfect. It's like, you're trying to put words on something. If you're putting words on it. It's a miracle. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so, and then I, as I looked around, it's like, okay, we're in a cave that is made of volcanic rock. 
that is inside the core of the great attractor. <laughs> that's that's so cool. I don't know what the heck it means, but I can't I can't remember where that placement is astrologically. It's so cool. It's connected to so the powerful four galactic super points. Um and and this cave is huge. Um, it might sound small because I'm the word cave, but so this is the best way I can explain it. So the cave is peaceful and the dragons keep peace and balance throughout the whole great attractor. And what I was seeing is I, I could see the stars and the galaxy shining through the cave, shining through the volcanic rock. And I doused for clarity many, many times to confirm that this cave is indeed inside a vortex of stars in the core of the great attractor. So it's just really out of this world. Um, and this was the piece I received uh, before we got on the call. The reason why I was able to see through the volcanic rock to see the stars and the galaxies surrounding the great attractor is because these dragons have x-ray vision. They can see through things. So I'm like, <laughs> oh, this makes sense. <laughs> I have x-ray vision too <laughs> so so oh. it's like I, I mean I I when I I have I have had to train myself over the past decade to be able to keep a boundary because when someone makes a sound or a motion I can see things about them about their past of, and it, it's almost like I receive so much information by looking at something that it is it's overwhelming <laughs> but like, yes oh. that, that's amazing that is so amazing thank you uh, we need to talk more about that skill. Yeah. <laughs> after, after. I know. I'm so happy to. I'm so happy to. That's amazing. This has happened to me. And why do, do I not know anybody else that has these freaking experiences? Well, uh, there may not be very many of them. <laughs> maybe. Or, yeah. yeah. Or maybe. But anyway, thank you. It's very confirming. Thank you. You're very welcome. So welcome. So um, there also it was no talking there. Everything is telepathic. So these ancient dragons have mastered alchemy and many other skills in any which way they can be mastered. So they, they really do keep to themselves and their areas of study, and they're always improving and building upon it. So um, what else was really important for me to know was that this they dedicate themselves to upholding the balance and the peace in their environment. So they really are holding the balance and peace in the whole of the great attractor. Mm -hmm. And I kept hearing that they are very musical beings, but we're not able to comprehend yet what that even means in their terms. You know, I don't think there's dragons playing drums and <laughs> guitar. Like, I'm not sure what yeah. their musical ability is yet but they do make music <laughs> it's interesting to hear you say that because i believe that my, my prayer for the next part of my mission has been that to bring bring music that has never been heard to this planet because i am i'm a singer oh. but but i but every time i try to sing a song i'm singing inside of a structure that is a lot older or a lot denser or it, it's a structure it's like working with tarot you're working inside of a structure it's different than an oracle card which has less structure but it's still like an oracle card deck has oh it's about this so it's defined and the sound i need to make is not defined but i don't know what it is yet and i haven't been able to come even close to making it and it's just frustrated the heck out of me when you say that i'm like oh i just i can't yet it's, it'd yeah. be a miracle when i do <laughs> when you're speaking i'm seeing sacred geometry um like as the structure um, that sounds exactly right yeah, yeah so i'm not quite sure how that fits me neither we'll get there someday but um, yeah. again it's more more confirmation of what you're finding and it just helps me to know i'm not crazy <laughs> yeah yeah so that's so beautiful and it was actually really persistent that i put in the musical piece because it was just mm -hmm. like no you have to tell her we're musical you have to tell her we're musical i'm like okay thank you you're welcome <laughs> So I was also told that any of the dragons, this is this is important now, any of the dragons can choose to leave their home. But in order to leave, there is a fee that is rendered to keep the balance of their home vicinity. The exchange 
is a change in form and memory loss. And the reason why they do this is because every dragon is accounted for as a peace and balance keeper in their own right. Their form, memories, and frequency as a dragon being stay in the core of the great attractor to uphold the environment there. So wow. when you, yeah, yeah, it's like this whole network there. And I didn't receive a death like I, in terms of life, like I, it's either infinite or I was not allowed to receive the answer. But yeah. that's why like you, everyone is a network there and everyone is so equally important. So if you take one out, it changes, wow. it changes the environment. So if you want to leave, you can, but there's the exchange and you have to leave your form, your memories, um, and frequency there. Um, but it's not all that. So when here, where did I stop? So when you leave, uh, you know, it's a risky journey, but many ancient dragons have done this because many did grow tired and bored and <laughs> just wanted to experience a new life. You know, I, I could only imagine what it's like to master so many things and master it like fully, totally, completely, that I'm mm -hmm. sure there would come a time when you're like, what else is there? <laughs> it reminds me of um, what I've heard about um, what we know of as God is a spark in the infiniteness of what is actually God and, and that we have very little understanding of a, whole, of a wholeness of God. We only know like this tiny bit and that's fine. That's that we can see that because it's all still God, but um, they re remind me of an essence that's that old and yes. that like that much close to the oneness that they, they're like, okay, I'll just leave this oneness behind for a little while and go have an exper experience somewhere else. Cause it's different. I already know what oneness is. So yeah it reminds me of that I, I actually totally resonate with that and feel the same I when I uh, connected to the dragons many times every time I get that impression like there must be source and then dragons or like it's so tight together yes. um that's, that's what, what it, I feel like exactly yeah but, well and like the the it, for me the great attractor those places that are like the black hole for mm -hmm. me they're the they're because we're experiencing duality by seeing them that way as separate from space itself um that's the feminine the feminine is and it's not empty we only think it's empty so it's yeah. like this ancient feminine part of of divine and and it's so like there's basically up to duality you get to that edge there's the great attractor there's dragons then you're in oneness yeah. <laughs> or something so fascinating that's amazing yeah. it, and it um also i, I would say I have had a Mission Impossible incarnation uh, of things that happened to me in the physical in this life for me not for me to come out and be whole through it. This is one of the only ways that that would have been possible is for me to have a blueprint somewhere somewhere else that was absolutely unbreakable. If that makes any sense. That makes total sense. It makes a lot of sense. Um, helpful <laughs> to know because I've always been like, how the heck did I survive that? Oh. That, that makes sense. Wow. So eventually you decided that you wanted to experience uh, something else. You mastered alchemy. That alchemy was your thing. And you could, you've mastered it in every which way you possibly can. You stayed for eons, but you simply got bored and felt it was time to try something else. You are fully aware of the fee rendered as every dragon. There is no secrets. So it's like it's a fully conscious decision and you're either okay with it or you just don't do it. Um, so you decided it was time. Um, you, you made your departure. This was wild to see. You made your departure through a portal of quick moving lights and sound. And before you left, you did choose your arrival destination, although you may not remember it. Your soul landed in Alpharet's Andromeda, which is 130 light years from Earth. You were birthed 
to two Andromedan parents and were a pale blue skinned humanoid. You experienced the balanced <laughs> love of a mother and father. Do you want, do you want? There. You're great. You're doing great. Sorry. I can explain. No, no. I don't, I don't know what's, how much is okay to share or not. So Go ahead. I'd love to. I was working my last my last mission with someone who I was being taken advantage of. It was cult related, blah, blah. But I was also there to help these two kids that um, came in in 2016 and 18 and needed ancestral clearing. Um, so there was a point I'm walking with one of them. She was two, I think. And I'm walking down this boardwalk on a beach. And I was like, where are you from? And I was like, are you from Andromeda? <laughs> and, then, and then the look on her face, she's like, yep she just straight up answered me and then when we got back to I was like your kids from Andromeda and and she, her mom looked at her so are you from Andromeda she went, yep and it was just this very sweet moment with this little girl and the the karma and difficulty that I was working with them was almost impossible and and again it's like part of how I was able to connect to the two of them had to do with what you're saying and I love Andromeda but I never thought it's almost like it's been like this beacon for me that I've never dared to even imagine that I have a connection there because it's just so beautiful. I'm like, no, no, I must have come from some shit place with my life and that experience. There's no way I have anything to do with that place. So to like find out that I could connect to her because I have a connection there. It's like, of course, that's amazing. <laughs> so, oh my God. You're so funny. I'm glad I'm glad you shared that. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for hearing it welcome um but yeah and, and I, you'll we'll get into how andromeda is actually a, a guiding light so that it's mm -hmm. i really clued in on the words where you said you you always felt you always loved it and it's such a special place and it's actually it actually has always been guiding you yay so so because wow. you were actually you were born there from two parents uh, a masculine role and feminine role and in this experience you had pleasant frequencies of a real family life like of what uh what family nourishment parental love a balanced masculine feminine role models actually mean and you really did have this in andromeda so it left a very positive imprint on your soul and um i see that you never experienced living as an adult in andromeda although you did go back to visit from time to time when you left there you were our equivalent to like a young 20 something year old adolescent that's what it felt like you were you know developed already you had lots of skills you were confident you know you grew up in the best environment uh, I think anyone can grow up in um and then you you wanted to go visit the Vega star system in Lyra to assist earth on its evolution so you were uh young, bright, and enthusiastic female Andromedan humanoid, extremely helpful, social, and knowledgeable, and you were so excited to go assist another planet. So now we're getting into Vega. So Vega is the brightest star in the Lyra constellation, and you were eager to go there. Like I felt your excitedness just the same way a teenager is like oh I'm gonna go see my favorite band or whatever <laughs> like you were so lit up that you were going to Vega um, <laughs> and this is where it was great for a little bit and then you experienced the Lyran Draconian Wars and this is where the deep soul wound of not being able to have a safe place to settle in came from oh it's like we because we went from the you, you're taking me through the process from the dragons from the great attractor to this place and it it is it's like the first point i can feel a anything that isn't good yeah. it's amazing that is, isn't good it's yeah it's, wow it's amazing yeah. Thank this you. is like when the descent descension almost started yeah again. I mean, still yeah. from Dragon to Andromeda, there would be a descension, but still it was a harmonious experience. Yeah. And now we're introducing for the first time 
not harmonious experiences and then how it affects the soul. You're introducing the anti-dragon. <laughs> Right, yeah, the, that way. the first time the anti-dragon comes on the scene. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay, yeah. So from Lyra, though, it, it was havoc. You still really held on to like, no, I want to help the earth because you you really committed to this mission. And I can see that you still are. It's never left you. So you're so from La Vega, you were able to escape and you fled to Orion, Rigel, to the star Rigel, as you did hear from your time in Vega that parts of Orion were actually helping the earth. Mm -hmm. So you sought them out, you tried to find them, you journeyed around Orion to connect with these beings and you made your way there. But from here, you began to witness and experience duality, much like it is on Earth right now. Mm -hmm. However, you carried with you a mission to assist Earth, and you did stay on track, and you traveled throughout the galaxies, learning and experiencing many different ways of being and learning skills along the way. So what I gathered was this was a very long soul journey and path. And throughout the journey, your consciousness did develop scars of lack, betrayal, and poverty. Those were the... Oh. There you go. <laughs> bingo, bingo, bingo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. Came through. You are on the path of rising out of that and recently you did visit lyra again you did go back there after the wars and Amazing. i saw you do have positive connections in the lyra system and what did i see yes so um your moon is conjunct to lyra and mm. your soul told me that you have a strong affiliation with this constellation because you fell in love with lyra when you were there it was the beings, the environment, the liveliness. This felt like a true home for you. And I was also told that Andromeda, Andromeda gives you so much peace, even just when you think about it. And that mm. is because your parents there have never stopped loving you and are oh. fully aware of your earth mission. That's oh, so beautiful. Thank you so much. So <laughs> You're beautiful. Welcome, yeah. It's really, I thank you for the, everything about part of the way, reason I made the decision to do this with you is that, that you open space with Julia, that you, that you designed a container that you're aware of that. And I was like, yeah, we need that. I need that. So like that you can take care of yourself and your own boundaries and all that. And, and um, the, the whole um, session, like starting out so high, like this is it, like this is you. And then going way, way into it. The, I'm experiencing the fullness of the duality, I guess, with mm -hmm. that on, on top, like with that as the guide, instead of being inside of the mess and really thinking that that's me, like after the session, I'm like, no, that, that, that isn't me. I've had these experiences. I have energy still to transform. But the first thing we started with, that's me. Yes. So it's, it's extremely powerful to experience it really. And I'm even putting it into words, which tells me I'm already embodying like, like that feels great. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> I feel really supremely grateful 